genetics is something that I previously had really little experience with. Um, but something that, I, that attracted me instantly was with my previous work that I've done in the fields of astronomy where people have been using incredible technology to look further and further into the universe. I think at Sanger people are looking deep within the human being, so it's almost like a reverse telescope. Katie came to Sanger as a visiting artist and uh, talked to the uh, scientists here and had an interest in history and the evolution of life and representing that. Chris's work is looking at the pathways of human beings across the planet, um, but also mapping a kind of evolution of species through sequencing DNA. There is a tree of life that links all living and extinct species together, right back to the origin of life. And uh, in the past, we could only infer that tree of life by studying the structures of living species or the structures of fossils. But now we can also use DNA. I think learning about looking into deep history and deep time through using DNA to almost map a history of the planet um, is one of the things that sparked off the idea for this fossil necklace. I suppose I was imagining it a bit like a code for life, which is also what, almost what DNA is. It's a kind of holds within it a key to the connections between things and all of the replication of species through time. I begun by reading a lot about fossils, about what they are, the material makeup of them, where to get them from. And then we started going to international fossil fairs and I started buying them from auctions and magazines and directly from people. And I even found a number of them myself in Scotland. Eventually I started mapping them together in a drawing and, and I mapped the drawing into geological eras. So that was my starting point really. I, I started with an image of a necklace and the periods and then I almost started just trying to make connections between species and then eventually how that tied in with the human roots across the planet. I chose to work with Roger Duncan um, at Holtz in London. He's an expert stone cutter. So I was ordering the fossils to arrive in the studio where we were cataloguing them and archiving them, and then we sent them on to Roger. And Roger's process was to cut them into cubes, almost, and then to hand carve them into these tiny beads. A lot of the fossils are trace fossils, which means the, um, the surface of the creature was kind of um, embedded on the surface of the fossil. Some of them were, were full bones, like a whole leg bone from a mammoth, um, thigh bones. There's a fossilised bee, um, which is embedded inside a piece of amber, a bone from inside a whale's ear, which I find kind of interesting. Like it's this, this whale might have heard all of these sounds through the sea and now we've got this fossilised ear bone. This huge history of geological time is, is held within this tiny bead, almost like a sense of a cell containing DNA which holds this code of life within it. I think exhibiting the piece in Kettle's Yard is, is really quite a perfect context. The necklace is just going to be suspended quite simply in the middle of the space so people can walk around it and get up close with the magnifying glass. It's just a quite big, empty, white space, but with the light coming through the, the stained glass windows, it should be quite nice and quiet and intimate so people can really connect with this really quite small work. Before I started this project, I was really unaware just quite how much of, of the history of the Earth is still embodied in the material around it. So I've been imagining fossils now, but also what might exist in the future, in future fossils. And the necklace itself, you know, is a fossil, but I suppose it could almost be looked at as a living fossil 
or it's certainly been reformed and, and made anew, even though it contains these extremely ancient things. 